Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the small and large intestine. So the small and large intestine lies or it occupies the abdominal cavity. You can see here that the abdominal uh, walls have been opened and the abdominal cavity is being exposed. So both the small and large intestine lie anteriorly in the abdominal cavity. So before we go into that, you can see this uh, net-like uh, structure that contains some fats, some traces of fats on it. This is known as the greater omentum. So if you've been hearing about greater omentum, this net-like structure is known as the greater momentum. So it covers the small and large intestine. So the small intestine and large intestine, they are referred to as part of the GIT. And they both help in both digestion and the absorption of nutrients. So we we'll expose the, we we'll remove the greater omentum. Now, this is the small intestine. This structure here is the small intestine. And you can see that it lies more medially. It lies more medially. So this is the small intestine. And you can see that the small intestine is kind of convoluted or it is coiled around each other. Eh? It is coiled around each other within the abdomen anteriorly. So the small intestine is divided into three parts. And we'll be looking at the three parts of the small intestine. First of all, we have the duodenum, we have the second part, the jejunum, and we have the third part, the idium. So let's see the duodenum first. So the duodenum lies more posteriorly. So we need to expose the other parts of the small intestine for us to be able to see the duodenum. We need to expose it for us to see the duodenum. So this is the duodenum. This is the duodenum. And you can see it curves around the pancreas. It curves around the pancreas, head of the pancreas. So this is the duodenum and the duodenum is kind of C-shaped. So it's, it begins from the, from the stomach, the junction between the duodenum and the stomach, which is known as the gastroduodenal junction. And the duodenum takes part in most of the digestion and also absorption as well. So, having seen the duodenum, let's look at the other parts of the small intestine, which is the jejunum and idium. So, looking at this structure here now, the jejunum lies in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. So remember when we did the quadrant of the abdomen, I told us that we have the upper right quadrant, the upper left quadrant, the lower right quadrant, and the lower left quadrant. So the jejunum lies more or mostly in the upper left quadrant. So this is the jejunum. This is the jejunum. They lie mostly in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. Then this part here, this part here that lie in the lower right quadrant of the abdomen is known as the idium. So this is the idium. This is the jejunum and this is the idium. This in the upper left quadrant is the jejunum. 
while this in the lower right quadrant is the idiom. So we've been able to see the three parts of the small intestine. Then let's go over to the large intestine. Then the idiom joins the the large intestine through this junction. So this is the large intestine. This is the large intestine. This is the large intestine. It curves around. So the this is the idiom here. The idiom here joins the large intestine through this junction, which is known as the idiosecal junction. So this junction here is known as the idiosecal junction. So let's see the different parts of the large intestine. So we have the first part of the large intestine, which is this. You can see this pouch-like part is the first part of the large intestine. This now. And this is known as the sacrum. This is the known as the sacrum. So it is the first part of the large intestine. And the sacrum contains a worm-like structure that is attached to it. You can see this worm-like structure attached to the posterior end of the sacrum. This worm-like structure is known as the appendix. This is the vermiform appendix, which vermiform means that it is worm-like. So you can see it looks like a worm. Then, having seen the appendix, the idiosecal junction, and the sacrum, let's go over to the other parts of the large intestine. Then you can see this part going up. This part going up is known as the ascending colon. This is known as the ascending colon. You can see it is ascending up. So that is why it is known as the ascending colon of the large intestine. Then the ascending colon curves. The ascending colon curves eh, to continue as the transverse colon. But then, at this junction, or at this point where it curves, this point is known as the hepatic pleasure, or the right colic pleasure. And the reason why it is called the hepatic pleasure is because it is directly related to the liver. Then, having seen that, then this is the transverse colon. You can see it runs transversely. It runs transversely. It runs transversely. So this is known as the transverse colon. Then the next part, at this point now, the transverse colon curves. And as it curves, this point of curvature of the transverse colon is known as the splenic pleasure or the left colic pleasure. It is called the splenic pleasure because it is directly related to the spleen. So the transverse colon curves to continue as the descending colon. So it curves to continue as the descending colon. So this is the descending colon of the large intestine. Then, having seen the descending colon, if you come down a bit, the descending colon continues as the sigmoid colon. You see this S-shaped structure. This. So, all this is known as the sigmoid colon, like I said. All this is known as the sigmoid colon. So, this point where the large intestine becomes very straight. It is no longer coiled. Now, it becomes very straight. So, this point now 
is known as the rectum downward so this is known as the rectum and the rectum uh, continues as anal canal to the exterior so this is known as the rectum so we've been able to see the different parts of the small and the large intestine then um coming to the large intestine you notice some tiny fats tiny traces of fats you can see these tiny traces of fats that is found on the wall of the large intestine these tiny traces of fats is known as the omenta appendages like i told us this is the greater omentum so these traces of fats is known as the omental appendages or the epiploic appendages then i forgot to tell us about the transverse mesocolon this is the transverse mesocolon it's it is attached to the transverse colon so you can see it is different from the greater momentum but it's kind of um the same color but if you check it is thicker it is thick but this is like a net so notice the difference so this is the transverse mesocolon so you don't make the mistake this is known as the transverse mesocolon then there is an important feature in the large intestine that i want to tell us now if you turn the transverse colon posteriorly you see this thick muscle band can you see it this thick muscle band it went on a straight line this thick muscle band is known as the tinea coli this is known as the tinea coli and the tinea coli is actually a a muscle band and the tinea coli sends fibers eh? it sends out muscle fibers to the wall of the large intestine and the muscle fibers uh, forms kind of an ulceration in the in the large intestine so the fibers of this tinea coli now form this ulceration in the large intestine you can see how it is you can see this ulcera eh? this is known as ulcera you can see another one is known as ulcera so it forms an ulceration you can see this first ulceration kind of like this you can see another one so it is the muscle fiber of tinea coli that forms this ulcera that made the large intestine to look that way then if you open the large intestine if you kind of open the inner wall of the large intestine so you can see some folds but they are not complete it is known as the semiluna fold so this folds is known as the semiluna fold of the large intestine so We've been able to see the different parts of the small and the large intestine. So, like I told us, the small intestine is divided into the duodenum. The duodenum, this is the duodenum, which continues from the stomach through the gastroduodenal junction. So, this is it. It is C shaped, as you can see then we have the jejunum we have the jejunum at the upper left quadrant we have the ileum at the lower right quadrant of the abdomen then the ileum the ileum connects to the large intestine through this ileocecal junction here then the first part of the large intestine is known as the sacrum, and the vermiform appendix is attached to the sacrum. Then this is the ascending 
colon this day hepatic pleasure or the right colic pleasure this is the transverse colon then the transverse colon uh, continues as the descending colon through this pleasure the splenic pleasure or the left colic pleasure so this is the descending colon actually the um descending colon went a more posterior upward and posterior it moves upward and posterior i had to separate it to bring it out so this is the descending colon this is the sigmoid colon eh? this part is the sigmoid colon and the sigmoid colon all this part is the sigmoid colon they continue as the rectum so this is the rectum so we've come to the end of this the small and large intestine i will encourage us to subscribe to my youtube channel like this video share this video to your friends thank you very much